Hey everybody, so I was about to record a video and I went inside and saw one of those tiny, what, do you, what are they, like a little beetle, like a green beetle. It was on the wall. Those, like they, they look like sort of like they're being camouflaged with the leaves, but it was on my wall. So I approached it and told it, dude, you, you're definitely not camouflaged. I mean, you look like a leaf on a white wall. He did not reply. I thought it was strange, so I approached him. And to my surprise, he had passed away. So, figured um, it is a well-preserved carcass. So, I might as well take a picture of it before I start the burying ritual. So yeah, this video is going to be about taking a portrait of a tiny insect. I'm gonna show you the insect right now before we do the macro shot, let me show you. So that's the bug. It's pretty small as you can see and I actually want to get a shot of its face. So um, I figured it could be cool to show you guys how that is achieved. So let me go get the camera and I'll show you. Okay, so normally we would use the macro lens. This is my favorite macro lens, it's a 200 millimeter. But uh, the reason I can't use the macro lens is because it's very small and here's where the reproduction ratio actually comes into play. So basically with, a, with that macro lens, I would get a one-to-one -one reproduction ratio. So the insect would be the size of the sensor. So if the sensor is this size and the insect is this size, that would be the size, I mean, we'd have to crop in or something. So the way that we get into him, we're gonna have to use a bellows and probably a 20 millimeter lens inverted to be able to get a, like a 10 times magnification, a little bit over that. This is a bellows. You actually put the camera on this part. You, we're gonna mount the 20 millimeter wide angle lens. We're gonna mount, we're gonna mount it inverted inside. And it's gonna be here, we're gonna separate it from the actual sensor. And this way we're gonna get a reproduction ratio of roughly like, well, it's gonna be like 10 times. So this way we're gonna be able to get the, the face of the insect. So let me, let me mount everything, one second. Okay, then we actually attach the bellows to that filter. And that's it. There we go. So that's basically, it's mounted already. Lens is mounted, it's inverted. Check it. See? Okay, now you can mount the camera on this side, but you mount the camera once the, once the bellows unit is mounted on the tripod. Okay. So basically up until now, that's what it should look like. And the camera's gonna be mounted on this side, and we'll get the bug over here. So I actually don't have a desk or anything to put it on right now. With enough space, we're actually gonna use this box from Figure. It's actually from a link on the King of Red Lions, just like that one. But I pre-ordered two of them, and then I can cancel the other one, so I ended up having two. So yeah, <laughs> um, I haven't gotten rid of it, so it's a desk now. And now everything's mounted, so we just need to get the actual camera on the bellows. I'll get rid of some dust first. Go. Turn the camera. There we go. It's locked in. Okay. Got the camera, bellows, 20 millimeter lens, and the actual bug. What we're missing right now is the lighting. So I guess I'm gonna mount that ring light that I used for streaming. Um, and I guess flash. So let me do that. I'm thinking this setup should be enough for light. I just might pop on a diffuser on the flash. Okay, so the challenge now is actually finding the bug because it's so tiny. But you can see here, we're starting to find a leg. So you just gotta kind of map it out. Probably the face is around here, but it's out of focus. Okay, that's it. Lock it, lock it, lock it. 
Now, I didn't go all the way because the magnification was too much. The phase is too small. I mean, the, it's not small enough for that kind of magnification. So we're gonna be able to, that's, that's the face right there. Now, you gotta get it in focus, which is probably around, let's see. Yeah, that's it. But the thing is, I wanna go higher because it's got, it's got some crazy looking eyes on the top. I don't know if you can see it from there. But give me a minute. Okay, so now, as you can see, The, you can't get the whole the whole face in focus, so you have to actually stack it. So you're gonna have to take a picture over here, one 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 here, until you get the eyes in the back. And then you get everything in focus and you put it together in, in the computer. Okay, so that seems good for exposure. So we're gonna be doing 13 second exposure with the flash at max and this ring light at max. And that'll get us enough light. We're gonna be using this remote shutter, so we won't be making the camera move. You can also use a delay, but I prefer using the remote shutter. You have to wait so much. So it's gonna actually expose for 13 seconds, and then the flash is gonna pop once. And that's gonna be the picture. We can actually get away with these 13 second exposures because the instant is actually dead, so. I mean, if the instant were alive, you have to, you have to actually move. But right now we have all the time in the world, so. That's the only advantage of this poor guy's death. So I just got the full stack of the insect's face. Let's check it out on the computer. I already transferred the files and get them onto the software. We're gonna actually do the the stacking. So we're gonna we're gonna take all the different parts of the picture that we put in focus and put them together into one. So everything in, is in focus. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Let me. Okay. So usually I use a, a software called Serene Stacker. Today we're gonna be using Helicon Focus. I haven't chosen one so. I guess we'll check this one out. Probably gonna have to convert the files to TIFFs first. So I'm gonna have to go into, let me convert them really fast. There we go, select them all, let's export them. As you can see here, for example, only this part of the picture is in focus. Kind of this part right here. So we're gonna actually take all those little pieces and put them together like a puzzle. It's pretty cool if you're a big nerd, <laughs> I guess. Okay, export complete, let's close this up. Uh, I've never used this specific software, but I, I think it's gonna be the same as other stacking software. You can also use Photoshop, but Photoshop you actually have to clean the image a lot manually. I find it, at least the Rene Stacker was better for me. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> Bug, red eyes, Tiff. Here we go, these are the pictures. Uh, 27, okay. Let's see, they lowered pretty fast. taking all of the images we we took right now and putting them together in one. That's directly what it's gonna do right now. Let's see, it's actually building the image right now. And you can see it's cycling through the images and you can see how the focus, it's, it's that little tiny piece of information in each picture, you can see it right there. I think it's so cool, man. And there we go. Not bad, that is not bad. Okay, let's... Save it. Now we will save another TIFF for the retouched file. Now isn't that pretty cool? It took all the images and put them into one. Okay, here we go. So basically, as you can see here, each image has a different part of focus. And it keeps going back. It's this thin little line. And what we just did with the software is we put all, all we took the parts in focus of each picture and put them together as one picture. And that's the only thing we used, and we get this. And now we're gonna throw this picture into lightning. We're almost done. So you see it's it's a little it's a little more complicated than taking a picture of a human being. Just a little bit, just a little bit. File, let's import. Where are you? Where are you, image? Develop. Okay, and here's where we're gonna have some fun with the image. Now you can see that it's a little overexposed, you could say, but there's no actual there's no crushing, there's no clipping. We actually I actually kept a little bit under there, so we could actually have some fun with it. 
in post. The thing is, you always wanna overexpose a little bit, like always expose to the right. This way, you have all the information. And then you can, like if you wanna get, you wanna, you wanna have stuff in the shadows or whatever, you can do it in post. But if you don't have the information at all, you can't do anything with it. So yeah, let's, let's just start from zero. So this is our original file. Um, start with some contrast. It is, yeah, let's leave the exposure around here. There's not much in the shadow, not much in shadow detail. And here we go, we're starting to get a little bit out of this. You see, there we go, now, now we're actually getting something interesting out of this. Now we always want to use, give a little tiny bit of more sharpness and check. There's not a lot of noise, honestly. We got some specs here. I don't know if it's actually some dirt on the lens or some dirt on my sensor. I just cleaned the sensor, but the thing is with these long exposures with the actual bellows, you tend to get some dust in there, especially because we're doing long exposure, so it wouldn't surprise me. I don't want to clean it again, but if it's only on the edge, I'll probably live with it for a while. Okay, let's, let's get a little vibrant up. Now, I, th I like to also play a little bit with the colors. So, for example, here you got that red, but we can actually make this red a little more intense and saturated. There we go. And you see, we give it a little more pop. Greens, you also want to play, definitely want to play with the greens, especially with this bug. Maybe put them, we yeah, want to make them a little bit more saturated. Give it a little more blue. This is a lot of personal preference, honestly, but I mean, I, I would like to take it to more or less how the insect actually was, but also give it like a twist. So here we go. This is basically, I am starting to feel, I'm starting to be happy with this image. Um, I think we can get away with a little, oh my God, am I crazy or do you guys see the ha a happy face right here? The eyes, <laughs> the mouth, here's like the cheeks. <laughs> this is the nose. Oh, there you go. What a beautiful, happy face. Oh, damn. Now, it's one of those things that once you see it, you can't unsee it. God damn. God damn. I can't even see the insect's face. Just see that the weird human face there, or whatever. Oh, my God. Oh, the picture is ruined for me now. Excellent. Okay, so this will this is the final image, and I am happy with it. Unfortunately, I can't stop looking at this weird face that I now see, which is this smile here, and then you got the nose and the eyes, and these are just the cheeks, and now it's a weird man's, a weird clown's face, so yeah. Goddamn, now I can't see that clown. <laughs> but, okay. Uh, we could get rid of this highlight, but I don't know if it's necessary, it doesn't bother me. So yeah, this is the final image. Basically, we, we took all these images, then we, we turned them into tips, we stacked them, we got the stacked image, this is a stacked image, and after all the tweaking, we got this final image right here. Okay. So now let's export this image. We will export it as TIFF as well. And there we go. Success. Was it all worth it? <laughs> the two hours I spent doing this worth it? Definitely worth it, man. Definitely worth it. I mean, look at that. Look, look at that happy boy. Look at his big old smile, man. I mean, that's the face of somebody who died happy, who had a, who had a really fulfilling life. So, what's the name of this bug, you're wondering? Well, his name is Slumpy. And Slumpy died happy. So guys, um, I guess I will upload this image to my Instagram. Um, yeah, I'll upload it. I'll drop a link to the image in the comment section after the video is up. And now let's proceed to the burying ritual for Mr. Slumpy.